Okay, so for this video, I am going to teach duality theory in a simpler way. So as you've seen in your courseware, um, there is what we call duality theorem, wherein whatever is the solutions in the primal are actually supported by a dual problem. So for example, if your primal problem is using decision variables x, therefore your dual will have to use another um another variable let's say for example y and then if your primal problem is maximization then z becomes a profit therefore the dual problem is the opposite so it's minimization using w as cost or if the primal is minimization therefore the dual is maximization so the c here the coefficient of your objective function becomes the right-hand side of your dual problem. So the coefficient of the primal problem becomes the right-hand side of the dual problem. And then the right-hand side of your primal problem becomes the coefficient in your dual problem. And then there is an interchange of the coefficients if it is horizontal in the primal problem they become vertical in the dual problem so to make it easier to understand i have here an example so here for example for the primal maximum profit of 3x1 plus 5x2 therefore in the dual the coefficients become the right-hand side of the dual problem. And then your coefficients from the dual problem are actually the right-hand side of the primal problem. So therefore, the right-hand side becomes the coefficients of the objective function in the dual problem. And then, as you notice, that's x1 less than or equal to 4. Therefore, that becomes y1. So... All the vertical values becomes horizontal in the dual or vice versa. So x1, there's no x2, therefore plus 3, y2, uh, y3. And then there's no x1, uh, there's no value here, therefore you have no y1 there. And then you have 2y2 plus 2y3. So the horizontal matrix, oh, sorry, the, the vertical matrix becomes horizontal matrix in the opposite side. And of course, your variables are now x1, x2 greater than or equal to 0 for non-negativity constraints and y1, y2, y3 for the um, non-negativity constraints of the dual problem. So I'll give you a more, so this is actually in the matrix form. I'll give you more examples. So by the way, please take note that if one of the problem has visible solutions and a bounded objective function, therefore, creating an optimal solution, obviously, your dual problem also has a solution. If one variable has visible solutions but there is an unbounded objective function, meaning there are no optimal solutions, then the other problem will automatically have no feasible solutions. If both or if just one variable has no feasible solutions, then the other problem either has no feasible solutions or there is an unbounded objective function. So that is the duality theory. So for example, you have this uh, mentioned here with a related linear... Okay, for every linear program, there is always a related linear program called as dual. The original problem in relation to its dual is termed the primal. It is the relationship between the primal and the dual, both on a mathematical and economic level, that is truly the essence of duality theory. So example, you have this problem. A small company in Melbourne was recently engaged in the product production of office furniture. So obviously, you have to create three products, tables, desks, and chairs. For the primal problem, these three becomes our variables. We can call this as x1, x2, and x3. x1 is for the number of tables, x2 for the number of desks, 
and x3 for the number of chairs. Then, in producing a table, it requires 8 kilograms of wood and 5 kilograms of metal, therefore giving us constraints on wood and metal. And they are sold for $80 per piece. A desk uses 6 kilograms of wood and 4 kilograms of metal and is sold for $60 per piece. And a chair requires 4 kilograms of both metal and wood and is sold for $50 uh, a piece. We would like to determine the revenue maximizing strategy for this company given that the resources are only limited to 100 kilograms of wood and 60 kilograms of metal. So, create so we let X1 as our number of tables, X2 as number of desks, X3 as number of shares. And then corresponding to the given values there, 8, 6, and 4 for wood, 5, 4, 4 for metal in terms of production of tables, desks, and shares respectively. And then we have, uh, by the way, this is not profit. Oops, oh, yeah. So price is eighty dollars, sixty, and fifty dollars per uh, corresponding or respectively. So they are subject to the values eight x one plus six x two plus four x three less than or equal to one hundred because it is only availability. Therefore, you should not go beyond one hundred kilograms. And then five x one, four x two plus four x three less than or equal to sixty. So to to solve if there is a feasible solution, you can either use graphical. In this case, you cannot use graphical because it has more than two variables. Or you can use simplex, or the easiest one is using solver in MS Excel. So we have found out to get a prof to get a sale, to get a price, uh, to get the maximum price uh, of sales revenue nine hundred sixty dollars. We have to produce twelve tables. Okay. Now, in creating the dual problem, we want to know also if how much are we going to spend only for the resources? Because as we as discussed your coefficients from right the coefficients from your objective function becomes your right hand side and your right hand side becomes your objective function we know that these two are kilograms in terms of wood or metal right therefore we also change our program so since it is opposite if you have only two constraints, therefore, it gives you two variables. So, that's your strategy. If there are two constraints, two variables also. If there are three constraints, it also will give you three variables. So, that's the technique. In that case, you have two constraints giving us two variables, y1 and y2. So, we are just like that's the good thing with having a table because you can just switch the table or transpose the table for easier um, creation of constraints. So instead of 864, 864 becomes horizontal and 544 becomes horizontal. Then the coefficients from your objective function becomes your limitations. And your 160, which were your coefficients in the objective function, becomes your, ah, uh, sorry, the 160 kilograms as, as limitations in your primal problem becomes your objective function. So, therefore, that is your objective function. So, minimization of the cost, cost of wood and cost of metal. We know that the y1 represents the cost of wood therefore if we multiply that to 100 kilograms that is our cost total cost for wood and then y2 multiplied by 60 kilograms so whatever cost is in y2 multiplied by 60 kilograms that is our total cost for metal so in this case our aim is to determine how much are we willing to spend at the most minimum for each of the wood or metal which were constraints in the dual problem subjected to we have eight kilograms allowed of production for um for wood and then five for five kilograms for metal in terms of this constraint is for the tables right and then so on and so forth and then y1 y2 zero so hopefully you got that right and then uh, we solve using excel therefore 
we have to spend $16 only per metal in order to get the sales price of $960. Okay? So, technically, the dual problem is just a support to the primal problem. So, if we're going to do that in Excel, by the way, um, obviously here, your answers will be um, allowed for integer. But for the dual problem, since your Y1 is cost and Y2 is also cost, it can allow non-integer values. That's why in the solver, here in the solver, I did not put integer constraints because it can uh, have values ranging 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5 since it is cost. Okay, that's the only difference when creating the spreadsheet model. Alright, so I'm going to write that. So this is your primary problem using the same problem as discussed earlier. So to create the dual problem, if this is maximization, automatically the objective function of the dual is the opposite, so minimization. And then please use a different variable. Okay, and then it, if these are the coefficients from your primal, they become the right-hand side of your dual problem, meaning your constraints will be 3. If there are 3 variables, that means in the dual problem, there are 3 constraints. So, this is 80. 60 and 50 and then your right hand side if there are only two right hand side obviously you have also two variables in the dual so if there you have only two constraints here your dual problem will also have two variables only so in that case that's 100 y1 so you have to use a different variable plus 60 y2 so if this is if this is horizontal to translate that they become vertical here so that's 8 y1 6 y2 4 uh, sorry y1 and 4 y1 and then plus plus and plus and then this is 5 y2 4 y2 and 4 y2 okay so that is your dual problem so don't forget y1 y2 and y3 should be greater than or equal to zero for your non-negativity constraint 